tour in Australia was uh, was great. I really enjoyed the shows. The whole tour, like the whole three months, like I had uh, Europe, I had the US, and uh, three months of a tour is quite. It's like it's hard. I miss home badly, but um, I can't complain because. Dubstep in Israel is huge and um, this is how me and my fellas picked up on dubstep so early because like in 2000 and s this is how big the dubstep scene in Israel is no like um, we already picked up on dubstep back in 2006 we already had the headliners and shit so we had like we had we had um, Scream twice, Caspar and Rusko twice, like, we had crazy headliners like Pendulum, everyone, back in 2006, 2007. I produce all sorts of music, um, and what inspires me is just like straight up passion. Uh, I just love what I do, I love music. Like, seriously producing, I started like two years ago. Um, before that I was just playing with Fruity Loops and shit and I was doing I was looking for what I want to do so I I was trying hip hop I was trying drum and bass I was trying trance but then one day I've heard dubstep and I said okay from now on it's full on dubstep like this is the shit this is the music I was looking for my whole life it's way easier these days with the internet like I guess that 10 years ago if I've been in the same position it was hard because basically there's no like major label supporting me or I'm not living in a big scene. So I think 10 years from like ago it was impossible but thanks to the internet, YouTube, like, MySpace, Facebook, all that shit. You just need a good product and you're there, you know. If I had to collaborate with someone, like so many good artists, like on one hand you got the slang like this by the True Tiger crew which is amazing grime tune and you got uh, the Trolley Snatch Arcano remix and you got every single Skrillex tune that he puts out and every 16 beat tune they put out this scene is... I thought, I thought we reached a barrier but people keep on pushing it forward like you know I'd love to sit down with Drake like, I seriously love his like his lyrics are fucking brilliant and I feel that a lot of his tunes are telling my story so even if it's just sitting in the studio and jamming with him and having a drink and enjoying some like you know company and shit I'd like to sit down with Drake like I'm dying to meet this guy if I had to make a, sh a live show with like with metal bands um, it will be more than one I'll bring Chuck Schollinder back from the dead and uh get death on death will be on the rooster at the gates old school supple tour with uh, max and igor not the new singer uh bring me the horizon the faceless parkway drive deftones mate I, so many bands i like incubus incubus yeah yo mate 2011 for bogo my first concern is uh, to go home next week and sit down and make a whole new EP for my fans. That's the first thing. That's my first like my first concern to make m to please my fans. Afterwards, working with people and like expanding to m the metal scene or expanding to the to the major label scene. Yeah, I I'd like to do that. But first thing is going home and make more of my, myself Yo. quiet let's hope 2011 will be good for Borgo I guess because if the world end in 2012 we need we don't have a lot of time in it um, bygo.com uh, it's first of all it's a label but uh, we try to do a community Basically, in the I think it will take us like one more month till the new website will come up, which will be much more crazier. We thought, well, what we're playing for the next website is uh, we're gonna have bygo.com, which sells like bygo uh, recordings um, uh, releases. But we're gonna have Elephant, which is my um, I'm starting a new clothing line called Elephant. We're gonna have that on the, on the website too. 
but the main ma the main thing is uh, the blog we're gonna have on the site, uh, which I gave a lot of artists accounts. So basically, like a lot of artists you like, or a lot of labels or influential people will just like go on the on the blog and post shit, like you know, like uncensored, honest, stupid shit. So it's gonna be it's gonna be great. Fashion in dubstep scene is is various. Like some places it's super neat, some places it's bad. And um, I gotta be honest, like in Israel where I come from, it, dubstep is related with the uh, skateboard scene, with hip hop, with metal. So everyone is like you know plugs, tattoos. Like everyone's dressed urban style, let's say. But some places you go to a, a dubstep rave, and what you see is um. I'm gonna lose a lot of fans if I'm gonna say it. So I'm from the top. <laughs> what I want, what I expect my my fans to be dressed as when when I come to a show is is much more like urban style. I think dubstep is a urban thing rather than a raver thing. But again, in in the US, a lot of ravers like dubstep and. Basically, you know what? When you come to a dubstep brave, dress whatever you want to dress with. I'm just saying. Would you ever want a tiger as a pet? <laughs> yeah. Just throwing it out there. Um. Well, if if I was offered a tiger as a pet, <laughs> problem with tigers that when they're young, then they they're super nice and cute, and then when they grow up and figure out they can eat you, this is what they do. So. If I had to choose a, choose a wild pet, I'd go for a wolf because they live in packs. And if I was assertive enough to show him I'm the alpha male, he would have just like been my wingman. <laughs> Safe. I, I like dogs more than cats by death. My idea of a perfect party is a party where it doesn't mean it doesn't like necessarily has to have to have like shit. I'm drunk at this stage, but. My idea of a perfect party is um, it unnecessarily has to be like a lot of people. It can be like five, six hundred people in a very cozy place, very sweaty, very rowdy. A lot of hot chicks getting naked, a lot of like people mosh peeing and, and like girls grinding all over. Like I want to fight my decks from not falling. I want to have the crowd fucking banging the decks. It's Borgo. Do you know what's hardcore? Sucker punch.